thank you for joining me in this discussion of esophageal cancer and its management at the University of California at San Francisco. Esophageal cancer is a dread disease and it really represents a challenge to both the patient and to clinician alike. It's associated with a high mortality risk or risk of death and what has been observed over the course of the last several decades is that successful management truly requires a multidisciplinary effort. And by this multidisciplinary effort, what I mean is that a group of physicians from specialties such as surgery and medical oncology and radiation oncology, in conjunction with nurses and allied health professionals, form a team pulling with the patient to give us the best chance for long-term cure of the disease. By way of introduction, the esophagus can be looked at as effectively a tube that spreads, that stretches from the mouth to the stomach. and it transmits ingested food into the first portion of the GI tract. This long tube is lined with a set of epithelial cells, which is a sort of a coating of cells on the inner surface. And under certain circumstances, those cells can become cancerous and develop into tumors that can obstruct the lumen or the interior of that tube and then make swallowing very difficult. There are several risk factors for esophageal cancer, although many patients have no risk factor whatsoever. Uh, those risk factors include a diet that's low in vegetables and fruits, uh, obesity, smoking, a history of alcohol abuse, and chronic gastroesophageal reflux disease and heartburn. The presentation of esophageal cancer is often related to difficulties with swallowing, initially with solids such as breads and meats, but as the disease progresses, even liquids can be difficult to pass through the esophagus that is obstructed in part by the tumor. Unfortunately, esophageal cancer has a tendency to present very late. And by late, I mean that the tumor itself may actually have spread to the neighboring lymph nodes that drain fluid from the esophagus or to nearby organs as well, such as the liver. And this presents new challenges to the clinician and to the patient, including a need for multiple specialties to be involved in the management of the disease. The diagnosis and confirmation of esophageal cancer has really rested traditionally on two separate groups of tests, including radiologic tests and endoscopic technologies. On the radiologic test side, CT scans provide excellent anatomic detail to help for planning of operations or radiation therapy. In addition to this, clinicians often use positron emission tomograms or PET scans, which give us information about the biological activity of the tumor and also can provide information about the spread of tumor to neighboring organs and lymph nodes. Some clinicians also use contrast studies in which barium or another type of contrast is swallowed. And then with real-time x-rays, we can observe whether or not the esophagus has been completely obstructed or partially obstructed by the tumor. On the endoscopic side, there are two widely used techniques, including endoscopy itself, in which a flexible camera is placed through the mouth, and biopsies are taken. And in addition to this, photographs can also be taken of the, the tumor mass itself. And also endoscopic ultrasound, in which an ultrasound probe is added to the endoscope, and this shows the actual penetration into the wall of the esophagus of the tumor, which helps in staging and determining how advanced the tumor is, and also helps to govern what type of therapy should be given in order to manage the disease. The therapeutic options and the treatment for esophageal cancer have evolved quite significantly over the course of the last several years. Most notably is that the risk of mortality from the treatment has dropped quite significantly over the course of the last several decades. And so too has the morbidity or the risk of a side effect or a complication of treatment has dipped and got, continued to become uh, less, less uh, grave over the course of the last several decades. However, the broad array of different types of treatment technologies for esophageal cancer can really be boiled down into four groups. Uh, surgical, radiation oncology, medical oncology, and then what you might call palliative or stent-based technologies. Let's start with the surgical approaches first. There are several different techniques that have been described over the years in order to remove an esophagus and the associated lymph nodes. What appears to be the case is that the more extensive lymph node dissections are associated with generally better long-term outcome with esophageal cancer. 
a notable trend has occurred in the last decade or so of the use of minimally invasive, in some cases even robotic techniques, in order to reduce the size of the incisions, the pain, and the length of stay through minimally invasive techniques. A radiation oncology is the application of focus beams of radiation directly to the tumor itself and the surrounding tissues to try to prevent progression in the disease. Chemotherapy is the deliverance of uh, medicines generally through the intravenous route that are capable of destroying specifically tumor cells. Some of these agents are known as targeted agents in which effectively antibodies directed against the tumor or some element of the tumor uh, lead to the death directly of the cell. So there's quite, a, there's quite a large variety of different therapies that can be applied. And what's important is that these different uh, techniques of treatment of esophageal cancer can be applied in differing combinations. That is to say, in certain circumstances, one may receive chemo and radiation therapy alone as the definitive management of the esophageal cancer. And in other circumstances, patients will receive chemo and radiation therapy uh, af before another definitive therapy, such as surgery, and this is sometimes called neoadjuvant uh, therapy. There are a large number of studies that compare the different combinations of chemotherapy ahead of time, chemoradiotherapy ahead of time, surgery alone, and other combinations of therapies as well. And there's no real single definitive treatment strategy for all esophageal cancers, and this is one of the reasons why multidisciplinary approaches to esophageal cancer is so important. So what might be a very reasonable treatment plan in, in patient A may not at all be the appropriate treatment plan in patient B, and so that's why there really does need to be this tailoring of the treatment plan for each individual patient. Endoscopic technologies for managing tumors also include stent placement, and stents can be used in order to prevent the progression of the obstruction of the lumen of the esophagus such that patients can continue to nourish themselves up until the point that definitive management of the, t of the tumor can occur. To summarize, esophageal cancer is a dread disease. It places a great burden on the patient and it truly requires an effective team effort on, that, on the part of the clinicians in order to bring together specialists that are truly dedicated to managing this disease. Uh, if these pieces of the puzzle come together, a, an effective team with multidisciplinary approach to cancer, then long-term outcomes can be quite positive, particularly for tumors that are caught early.